comments displaying over here. Philly in the house. Hello, Tammy from Georgia. Hello, Wyoming. All right, here we go. Always takes a few minutes with the technology, y'all. <clears throat> Who has, have you heard of a lantern swag? Do you even know what I'm talking about? Welcome. I'm Julie Samako, owner of Southern Charm Reeves, where we make beautiful wreaths and teach you how to make and sell them. Lantern swags are huge, all the rage. And it's funny because it's only popular in the South. When I ask other people if they've heard of a lantern swag, they don't know what I'm talking about. A lantern topper, a lantern arrangement, they're all called the same thing but they don't know what I'm talking about. So let me show you before we get started what exactly a lantern topper is. Here's one over here. So this is one I taught how to make in our wreath making of the month club group. I know the camera angle is a little awkward because it's up high in front of me, but you can see that it is a, a floral arrangement that you attach to your lantern. Now, they, don't, they could be as big or as small as you like them, but here in the South, we like to go big or go home. Am I right? So you, um, you just attach something, some a land, you know, floral arrangement to your lantern, and then it adds color. So if you're putting this lantern on your fireplace, it brings color down on the floor. Um, if you're putting it on your front porch, on your back porch, anywhere in the room, it's just another place for you to bring some of that color in. So imagine for Christmas, if you want some of that red and green over um, in that area of the home and there, you don't want to put another tree or there's not a room for a tree or whatever, you can always just attach a, um, a floral spray to your lantern. All right. So this is a, a 20 inch lantern. So you can see that that's the size of it. Now, this one does have glass. They have them um, that don't have glass, right? So there's some that are opened, which are my favorite to put outside. Um, once you put one of these toppers on your lantern, you don't wanna put a flame candle on the inside. You wanna put a flameless flameless candle, or you can fill it with acorns or pine cones or faux fruit or pumpkins, or, you know, you can fill it with anything you want to, but you just definitely don't want to use a flamed candle because the, um, the heat will, you know, not do well with these artificial flowers. So we could just take it off, store it for the next season or the next holiday or the next year. And then here is this one so there's another one that i made that just goes pops just right on top and wires so that's what we're going to be making and we're going to do one with sunflowers today are y'all interested in in helping me out <clears throat> all right so <clears throat> hello R rochelle hey sarah Martha bought the kit. Martha bought the kit from the Wreath of the Month Club lantern to make it. And she, girl, you'd better make it now that you got the kit. And you have no excuses now. All right, so here we go. This is the, um, these are the sunflowers that I want to use. So let me pull this out of the way because we're not ready for this one right yet. I have lanterns in all sizes down there. So this is the spray that I'm thinking of starting with. The lady on TikTok wanted a sunflower lantern topper. And here I am obliging you with it. So just going to spread this out. Whenever you have your florals all together like this, it's called a spray. 
Let me put the camera down. It's called a spray. So I like to start with sprays when I'm de dealing with my lantern toppers because they're already evenly positioned. They're, this, the florals are already spaced and it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Now I've also hand tied my own sprayed sprays, but if you can start with one that's already so somewhat started, it um, just helps, it just helps. I'm just gonna tie this up a little bit because it was a little loose. <clears throat> Jennifer says UP, the, U, the post office wanted to charge her $100 to ship a wreath. Well, that's way too much. You definitely didn't do something right, sweetie. Mainly going to the post office. <clears throat> Make sure you get, you know, your wreath in a in a smaller shipping box. All right, we're just going to secure some of these stems down there. I'm using bind wire. It's just going to make these a little bit tighter because some of them are a little loosey-goosey. Let me move that one down a little bit. Okay, so I think I got that a little bit more secured. We'll see. I'm not gonna, I think I'm gonna take these, these flowers off, I mean leaves on the very bottom. I could put them somewhere else, but in my opinion, they're just not quite a fall color for me. They're not doing it for me. So I might add them back later, but for right now, I think I'm just gonna cut those off. So we've got our spray. And we're going to build up on this, okay? So I'm going to put um, a bit. So I've got this one. It's got, this is another spray. This is leaves of all kinds. And it has a little wheat looking thing. And it's got this little green thing. And I'm just going to layer this on top of it. Actually, let's get one more thing. Let's get this. So we've got these berries and the orange and the red. I'm going to lay that on top of the leaves. going to line these up just like that and I'm sort of intermingling these together so they sort of you know marry together all right and now I'm going to lay my sunflower on top of that And then we're going to marry this together by just moving. We're intermingling the two, the greenery and the berries and the fall leaves. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's good. All right, so we've got, you see how it's, they're just married together, they're intermingled. Now at this point, you can add a zip tie if you want. I'm just gonna put that to the side and then we're gonna work. We Oh, I forgot to add this. I wanna add some of this. I think this is really pretty with it. This little pop of red, flaming red. Let's try. Let's see. Let's get this divided. Hello from Virginia and New Jersey. You can rewatch, yes. If you've missed it, you can rewatch. Hello, Lori from South Carolina. That's where I'm at. Let's add this right here. Um, let's go ahead and blend these in. I'm gonna zip tie that one in. <clears throat> All right, we've got our zip tie. Hardly see what I'm doing. All right, I'm zip tying this together. This one stem right there. Just wanted a little more red filled in right here. Okay, now we can work on the other side. So on the opposite side, so when I showed you the, the lantern toppers when we first started, we had the, um, we had a bow. Do you remember the bow? So we, in order for the lan my way of doing a lantern topper, now obviously there's other ways you can do it with foam and more flower arranging, but the way I do it is I create two sprays, a top and a bottom. So this would be the bottom. The bottom needs a little to be a little bit more um, larger. And then this would be the top. All right, I'll leave enough room in here for my bow. And then we start layering the top part. So the top part, we don't need to have so much stuff. So let me look at dividing this and figure out how much I want to put on the top. All right, so we'll just put this little piece at the top. And then also let's get some berries. Put this one at the top. Just layering these on top of each other. OK, 
Okay, and then we'll put this on the top. All right, so this will be our little spray on the top part. So now I'm gonna get my zip ties out. Just gonna put this here, leaving enough room. For my bow, don't forget my bow is gonna go right here. So I've got one zip tie, and now I'm gonna add another zip tie. Hi, Janet from P Pennsylvania. Lorraine says, I don't know why they intimidate me. Um, you know, they don't have to be so elaborate. El elaborate, is that a word? I think that for some reason it came out, it didn't sound right. They can be, a sim they can be very simple. They don't have to have so much. Okay, so we've got, let me make sure all the stuff is on top. Okay, so now you can see we're starting to construct something. We've got our bottom piece and we've got our top piece. Now what I'm gonna do is just turn this over and I'm going to cut off these extra pieces that are, we're not using. <clears throat> All right, so we don't need we don't need these long stems, right? We're just going to use all these extra stems we can trim off. <clears throat> there. Wow, that one's a hard one. All right, so we're going to do this one. And just be careful that you don't accidentally cut your, your, pretty, your pretty pieces that you want. Just cutting off your extra long stem part. Just gonna weigh it down if you don't turn it, cut it off. All right, so we've got that cut off. All right, so now let me show you what we have. Okay. So now we get to make our bow. We're gonna put a bow right here, and I'm gonna get this ribbon. I thought this ribbon looked really pretty with it. Get my florist wire ready. Y'all remember we made this Christmas wreath. We used the same ribbon right here that we did in our Christmas wreath that we made last Friday here on our channel. So I liked that this looked also fall or Christmas. All right, so we're just gonna unroll this Measure out 12 inches. I think I had it upside down. Let me. <clears throat> a milk can. Oh, okay, that's a good idea. Somebody wants a milk can tutorial. Let's do 12 inch loop. That looks good. See how I'm measuring the loops? So 12 inch loop one. Loop two, cut. Okay, 
loop one. This is wired ribbon, two and a half inches, two loops. I love the texture of this one. Let's move our loops into the front. Start to shape our bow. And then look at this. Isn't that pretty with the green and the sunflowers? So let's do a couple of loops of these. Put a little more color in the back of it. Okay, and then now we're going to add another loop of this, I believe. Hmm. I think if we add more, it will be a little dark. So let's add another loop of this. Let's just do one more loop. And we'll tie it off with our rib, our wire. We're using 22 gauge wire to tie it off. and then twist our bow to make it tight around the bow loops. Okay, so we've got our bows here, and I'm going to attach this now where we have our zip ties. Let me get this out of the way. So remember we had our zip ties right here. So I'm just gonna pop this on top of those zip ties. Bonnie says, what are the stars for? Um, I think people, for some reason, I think people can send, send me stars and it's sort of a way of tipping me, Bonnie. It's just a way of tipping. I never asked for them. I know some people ask for them, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm not doing this for tips. I'm just trying to educate, inspire, try to get you guys excited about making home decor for your own homes. And so, I mean, I feel like I, that's how I got started. It's just having fun. So that's what that is, Bonnie. All right, we're just dovetailing these ends right there. I'm gonna see if I have another glue in here. And then I'm gonna use the glue just to secure this down. All right, let's see, that's good. So you, who decorates with lanterns at home? Do you have lanterns in your house? Do you um, put them anywhere? 
Do you pull them out just for the holidays or do you have them out all year? I like to have mine out all year. Not to say I put florals on top of them all year. Esther made another sale on Etsy. Awesome. All right, so we've got our ribbon down and I'm gonna go ahead and put a leaf. I'm gonna put a leaf right here over the mechanics. And I think I'm just gonna find one off the ground and dust it off. And that's what we're gonna use. Just gonna cover up our mechanics. And I've got my glue pot over here with melted glue in it. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of glue on the leaf. I'm just gonna blow that off a little bit. So what could you put inside of your lanterns? You could put LED lights. Again, you can fill them with um, pumpkins, acorns, pine cones, bird, a bird's nest, ornaments if you're doing it for Christmas. Scotty has, they got theirs out all year. Martha has a million lanterns. Rachel has one she's going to work on. Love it. All right, so we've got that. So it's just hiding the mechanics right here. So now you can't see that. All right, so now fluff our bow. And this is where most people stop. They're like, oh, we got this. This is done. I'm going to, now this is where I want to, it's a little thicker than I like it, but we're going to, we'll figure it out. Let's get it, our lantern over here. This is a 20 inch. I think this would be pretty, pretty, not pretty, pretty for a um, taller lantern, 24, 28, even a 30 inch. This is size swag would be pretty. If you're gonna go anywhere like 18 or less, I'd probably make it smaller. I don't typically like the lantern swag to cover up the fact that we're, we're, we've got a lantern. So scale is very um, important when, when it comes to your lantern swags. You don't want to cover up the whole thing. And I see how this is a little bit on the big, this is definitely large. I'll, do, I'll move the camera in just a second. I'm adding my rustic wire as the hanger. You can use regular florist wire if you want or paddle wire. Use whatever you can find. We're just wiring this on top. I'm using the little um, vent. Normally a candle would be in here. This would be the vent. Sometimes you don't have this. Sometimes it's flat. If that's the case, I just wire it onto the handle. All right, so I'm gonna wire this on right here. Again, your um, lantern swag should be able to be interchangeable so I don't get glue on this, the lantern at all. Esther asked, how do you ship a lantern swag? You just, you know how you ship a wreath, you, it's the same way. You just, um, Let's see, this is all tangled up. So you would lay it in your box and zip tie it. All right, let's get this moved up a little bit. So at this point, this is where I do a lot of the shaping. So I go up here 
There's one stem that I forgot to cut off. And I move these pieces down. Spread this out. And then I'm going to dovetail my ribbon streamers. Work it around it. So sometimes my streamers need to be moved to the top. And then we move them to the side. All right, so we're just all I'm doing is dovetailing the ribbon ribbon. And let's move our streamers around a little bit. Now I did tape the streamer on the bottom down behind the spray, but if you want to have it woven in to the spray, that looks pretty too. I've done that before. So before, I mean, I've had ribbon go through the middle as well. All right, so we've got this down here, and okay, I've done the top, spread everything out. Let's position our florals so that we can see everything. That's pretty, and now I'm gonna work on the bottom part. Do you bend the swag to the shape of the lantern? Yes, Karen, you do. <clears throat> all right, so now all I'm doing is just you know, we had a lot of stuff on the bottom, so I wanna move things around so that it's a little more airy. This is where you wanna shape, bend things towards the lantern, maybe give a little curve to it. I'm just gonna twirl these little sticky things sticking out. They give a lot of texture, so I don't wanna trim them off. Just taking the time to just position everything, making remembering the spacing, and our berries are displaying, and our leaves are displaying. And then if I feel like something's sticking out, and I'm not a fan of it, I'll just trim it off. Okay, so this is what we have. So I tried to space everything. I also don't like all the flowers facing forward. So I'll bend those. I'll bend one down. We'll bend one over to the, to the side a little bit. And then maybe this one's head on, straight out. You're just wanting your eye to go from top to bottom. You're developing that line of sight. All right, so we're not finished, y'all. So here at this point is where I take a look and I see holes. So here is a little bit of a hole right here. If you wanted to, you can wire a pine cone. Let's see what that would look like. 
What do y'all think? Pine cones just say fall, don't you think? Winter, fall. So I'm going to go ahead and wire this on. Again, you can make yours as, as elaborate or as simple as you like it. You know, a bow might be all you want with some flowers. <clears throat> all right, so now what we're gonna do is work around the bow area. I like to have my bow kind of blend in with the arrangement. And at this point, it's just stuck on top. All right, so now what we're gonna do is work around our bow loops to get things inner intermingled. When you get a text, you're going live and your cell phone battery is low, run to the TV. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. All right. So I'm looking at my bow. Where can I move things? Okay, now let me see if there's, sometimes I take little pieces, you remember we cut this off, so I can move it up here and hot glue, just dipping it in my glue. This is going to have to be held a little bit, I think. And then we're going to get that situated. Rochelle's excited to start hers. Yes, so excited. I'm, I hope I'm inspiring you to try something new. If y'all have not tried crafting with flowers, it is really fun. All right, so we have that one added. And then do you see we added it right here? We're going to go ahead. We've got these extra berries. So let's trim off a couple of these. I also have this yarrow. Let's see, do I want the orange? Or do I want the yellow? Oh, I like the yellow. We're gonna trim off a couple of these. These are a little like fat little round. Oh, you know what? I brought over this pear because I thought this would be pretty in it too. You could put fruit. It doesn't have to be a pine cone. All right, so we've got that. And then let me get a leaf or two. Let's get some of these leaves. And I like this thing up at the top. Here, let me get that off. And then let's see where we want to add this. I think I'm going to add this over here on this side. It'll sort of help balance. There's a pine cone on one side. And I'll just put this one right over here on this side. I'm just sandwiching this glue in between the bow loops. I'm not gluing on the lantern. So when I ship my items to my customers, they don't get the lantern. They just get the swag. And I'm going to push this one back here. So I want to pay attention to these little crevices right here. So let's see if I can get something back there. We put 
that right there. Let's see, we have a leaf. We have some berries. Just play around, see what you like. This adds a lot of texture to the bow area. So the bow is very full of texture. You could have added raffia to the bow, which would have been brilliant looking. So we've added that one. I'm going to add this one right here. Darlene's going to dust off her lanterns. <laughs> uh, let's see. Rochelle says, my glue has a tan brown color. Does that mean your temperature's too hot? No, not necessarily. Um, mine is also a little tingy brown. It could just be pulling the color off of your florals. All right, I'm going to do the same thing on this side with my yarrow, filling in that little hole, and then we'll grab some of our flower, our leaves, pop those in our bow loops. All right, so I'm looking to make sure we have a really pretty um, shape. Let's get some of these. Don't we have one of these? I thought I cut this. So we had one, two. I could have sworn I had one of these already cut. Let's see. One, two, three. No, okay. Let me cut one of these. Instead of cutting this one and breaking it apart for just a few sprigs, I'm just going to cut off the, some of the top. Just cut a piece of, few pieces over here. Nobody's going to be the wiser. <clears throat> just want to bring some of this red through the bow. So this is what we have. How much would you charge for this? So I always tell people, um, depends on how much you've paid for it. So you would take your cost times three and that's what I would charge. Mine run anywhere from uh, $67 to $87 is typically what they go for. Um, a lot of times too, it's a good money maker for my business because I'm not necessarily using the whole roller ribbon. You're only, you can just use little um, scraps of ribbon, scraps of berries. So for example, this is leftover. We've got this leftover that we've not used. Um, you could add a pine cone to this, maybe um, a spare flower. <clears throat> you see how I might have one piece of fruit wire this on probably add it more like that and then put your bow and you've got a little you can add a little more obviously but you would you can use up little pieces that you might have laying around so instead of 
putting them in a box, which I do have a box over there full of stuff, pull it out and make a, a lantern swag with it. So these are really good to do also for your customers. Let's say your customers purchase a wreath from you and you've got a few leftover pieces, fashion a little bow with a swag to it. And it doesn't have to be this long. It could just be, remember we did this one not too long ago with leftover pieces from a wreath we made. See how it's just something small and you could throw it into your customer's box and um, they think you're, you know, you're just going the extra mile for them and it just, um, not they think, but you are, you're going the extra mile using up some of your scrap materials. <clears throat> Do I include instructions for attaching? It's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I do include pictures. So this photo would be taken with the um, wire wrapped around and this would be on the back. And, and my measurement of 20 inches would also be in the photo. Um, so I don't really include instructions. I mean, it comes like this and there's wire. So, I mean, I think it's pretty self-explanatory that you use this to wire onto the lantern. But you could if you wanted. Where do you get lanterns? Um, I got this one from Carolina Pottery here local. I purchased uh, three off of Amazon recently. How do you know when enough is enough? Um... It's just a matter of visually looking at it. It's the same thing with the wreath. You want to step back. You want there to be spacing, just like we teach in our Wreath Making of the Month Club group about spacing, how important spacing is. Once you figure, learn about the spacing and the line of sight, it sort of falls into place. It sort of falls into place. So just for me taking a step back, I can see that I can air, I can add a, pull that out just a little bit so there's not so much red right here. And I'm going to push it and move it up to the top. So we're just redispersing that. You're welcome, Cindy. Somebody said home goods for lanterns. That's a good idea. This would be um, fun for adding on to a wedding. If you're doing a wedding, you could have these um, on the wedding tables or you could have them on the floors um, lining the aisles. Um, you could have these for obviously fall or Christmas. They're just really pretty little additions to, um, you know, your decor. You can also take them off. So that, let me show you, you take this off and you can wire this onto a banister. I've taken my lantern toppers before in a pinch and I needed something for my tree topper. I've taken a Christmas lantern topper off before, plopped it into the top of the tree and we had a topper um, for the tree. So you can put these on lamp posts. You can put these on um, lights outside, you know, if you have two lights on either side of your front porch, you can wire these on. You can add these to garlands, banisters, um, where else? Oh, uh, you can wire them to the, we don't have the mailbox, it's over there. Wire this to this on the side of a mailbox. So, I mean, there's just so many different options that you can do with a lantern topper. Somebody said go to Hobby Lobby for a lantern. All right, you guys, I think that's it. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial just to inspire you a little bit with your lantern um, to, for the fall season. <laughs> uh, feel free to obviously use whatever you can find on hand. You can hand tie your sprays. You can start with a spray like I did and just add to it. Um, all of the ribbon makes beautiful texture. And then don't forget to shape after you put it on and then fill in the bow loops with some of the little pieces. Now remember that the whole goal for the, sp the spacing 
is you want to be able to see that you have a lantern, all right? You see how you can see that this is still a lantern on the side? Here's a lantern. So I could put a LED candle in it if I wanted to. Don't cover up the fact that this is a lantern. I've seen people take their lanterns and go all the way over to the side. I'm not a big fan of that, but if you like to do that, then more power to you. <clears throat> How hot is my skillet? My skillet is at 325 right now. I don't, I didn't want it too hot because I like thick glue for this one, because especially when I'm gluing into my bow loops, but you can, um, you know, and I don't, I don't have a lot of glue in it either. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. If you enjoyed this, make sure to follow. If you're watching the replay over on YouTube, make sure to hit subscribe and also the little bell icon. The next time we go live, you'll get a notification on your phone. And um, yeah, thanks for following and subscribing. Let me know what you want to see next. We already had somebody request a um, milk jug. Was that what it's called? A milk jug arrangement. So I'll see what I can come up with for that.